Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is Folks Martin from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey. Folks Martin, from his acquaintance with Sir Christopher Wren and his intimacy with Dr. Desagre, Martin Folks was induced to take an active part in the reorganization of Freemasonry in the beginning of the last century and his literary attainments and prominent position in the scientific world enabled him to exercise a favorable influence on the character of the institution. He was descended from a good family, being the eldest son of Martin Folks, Esquire, Counselor of Law, and Dorothy, the daughter of Sir William Howell, Knight of the County of Norfolk. He was born in Queen Street, Leicester Inn Fields. Westminster, October 29, 1690. In 1707, he was entered at Clare Hall, Cambridge, and in 1713 elected a Fellow of the Royal Society, of which, in 1723, he was appointed Vice President. In 1727, on the death of Sir Isaac Newton, he became a candidate for the presidency, in which he was defeated by Sir Hans Sloane who, however, renewed his appointment as vice president and, in 1741, on the resignation of Sloan as president. He was elected his successor. In 1742, he was elected a member of the Royal Academy of Sciences of Paris, and in 1746, received the degree of Doctor of Laws from the University of Oxford and Cambridge. In 1750, he was elected president of the Society of Antiquaries. To this and to the Royal Society, he contributed many essays and published a work entitled A Table of English Silver Coins, which is still much esteemed as a numismatic authority. On September 26, 1751, he was struck with paralysis, from which he never completely recovered. On November 30, 1753, he resigned the presidency of the Royal Society, but retained that of the Society of Antiquaries until his death. In 1733, he visited Italy and remained there until 1735, during which time he appears to have integrated himself with the Masons of that country, for in 1742, they struck a medal in his honor, a copy of which is to be found in Thory's history of the foundation of the Grand Orient of France. On one side is a pyramid, a sphinx, some Masonic ciphers, and the two pillars. And on the obverse, a likeness of Folks. Of the Masonic life of Folks, we have but few records. In 1725, he was appointed Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of England, and is recorded as having paid great attention to the duties of his office. Anderson says that he presided over the Grand Lodge in May of that year and prompted a most agreeable communication. Constitution 1738, page 119. But he had no office afterward, yet he is spoken of as having taken great interest in the institution. Of his literary contributions to masonry, nothing remains. The Pocket Companion cites an address by him in 1725 before the Grand Lodge, probably at that very communication to which Anderson has alluded, but it is unfortunately no longer extant. He died June 28, 1754, and was buried in the chancel of Hillington Church near Lyon, Norfolk. He left a wife and two daughters, an only son having died before him. Nicholas, who knew him personally, says of him, his knowledge was very extensive his judgment exact and accurate, and the precision of his ideas appeared from the perspicuity and consciousness of his expression in his discourses and writings on abstruse and difficult topics. He had turned his thoughts to the study of antiquity and the polite arts with a philosophical spirit, which he had contracted by the cultivation of the mathematical sciences from his earliest youth. His valuable library of more than 5,000 volumes was sold for 3,090 pounds at auction after his decease. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.